Okay. Yeah, you can see the uh, presidential motorcade coming back here to Air Force One. I was just mentioning, I'm, uh, I asked a, uh, one of the Air Guardsmen why uh, Air Force One idols, for lack of a, a better term, someone who's novice when it comes to aviation. Why were the engines on this entire two hours? And he said, because they need to keep all of the security electronics on board Air Force One going, despite the fact that uh, the president isn't on board. So this thing has been <laughs> idling for the last two hours. And they said it's also to make sure that there are no problems with its departure and takeoff. Okay, there you see the president uh, in the middle car right in front of the steps. Uh, he is on the passenger side in the rear. And uh, it doesn't appear as if he's going to come over to the press pool that has been here for the last two hours. Bidding adieu to whoever his passengers are in the limousine. But now the uh, all of the press pool that was part of the NIFSI tour, they are all getting out of their vans and they are boarding Air Force One now. Everyone is in masks as is mandated. There are some cameras set up waiting for the president to get out. And it looks like he's on the phone. Quite a scene here at Gowan Field. Yeah, Mark, from our vantage point, it looks like he's on the phone there. Yeah. Wrapping up a phone call before jumping back on Air Force One. Uh, they do. It, it's surprising that the president wouldn't have a cell phone that he could uh, <laughs> he could stay on <laughs> as he makes his way up the steps. Maybe it is a cell phone and he just prefers the security and uh, the privacy of the back seat of the limo. That's probably it. Uh, look at the press pool that's gathered there just waiting for that shot of the president getting out of the car. And there he is. From our vantage point, I cannot see him, so I don't know if there's been a wave or a saluting or a some of the military the officers who were there from mm -hmm. what appears to be the Air Force. Okay. Again, uh, the Air Guard from Idaho here uh, providing some assistance, but really all of this, and it is quite the orchestrated dance, all done by Secret Service and uh, some members of the FBI. There has been a Black Hawk helicopter that has been circling the perimeter here for the last two hours. And now I see that all of the airspace here has been cleared. So there are no flights coming in or going out of the Boise Airport. As the president turns and makes his way up the some 47 steps of Air Force One. President Joe Biden with a turn, a nod, and a wave. And his two hours in Boise, Idaho is over. There you have it. Not a long visit, and that's for sure. Take but now uh, it as I recall. It, it does not take long for what you would think would be a slow, deliberate process of a gigantic Boeing 747 to make its way back into the air. But uh, I was amazed at the times that I've seen this this parade, this orchestrated process happen, uh, it is literally a matter of minutes before everyone is on board, strapped in, and this thing taxis to the runway for its trip down to Sacramento and a short flight down there where the president will uh, survey the damage and the Calder fire and what the devastation uh, has been like for those Californians in the Sacramento Lake Tahoe area. That's his next leg.
Yeah, I was mentioning, Mark, that this wasn't a long visit, just two hours from the president, but any presidential visit mm -hmm. is important. It's a big deal. It's not like we live in New York or Los Angeles or Chicago, the larger cities where presidents often make their appearances. This is Boise, of course, and this is the first time in six years mm -hmm. that a sitting president has been here. And that's why right. we've gone wall-to-wall well, -wall coverage for it this. It shows, right, and it shows that the White House does know and understand and care about what's going on here out west. Sometimes we feel out west like mm -hmm. we're in a different country than where our White House is situated, but this is an effort to show that the White House does recognize that we've got issues here. The White House does recognize that we do need more federal support when it comes to this disastrous wildfire season that has gotten so bad so fast. I mean, Kim, you grew up here. You mm -hmm. remember what summers were like back in the 70s. They were never like this, not in the 80s, not in the early 90s. It's only been in the last 10 years mm -hmm. that we have seen the devastation from climate change do what it's done, and it's not going to get better. And that is what this symbolic visit is all about. Mark, we didn't have the smoke. I grew up in southeast Idaho in Blackfoot, and we had just moved to Idaho uh, right before the summer of the Yellowstone fire. And I can remember soot flying in the air, and we're a good two hours away. And that was 1988. I uh, remember, yes, right? yeah, yeah, and that's, that's a good two hours away, Blackfoot from mm -hmm. Yellowstone. And yet you can see, I remember on my mom's car, having to use the windshield wipers because the soot was on the car. But then that was it, Mark, that was it. You know, we went years without having any kind of smoke in Southeast Idaho. And now it just seems like that we're getting it all the time, and all I, summer long. I moved here in 2007 in August, mm -hmm. in mid to late August, and it was one of the worst fire years we've had. Mm -hmm. And so I just remember, you know, coming into town and getting situated and watching Channel 7, of mm -hmm. course, to get up to speed on everything. And it was fire watch, fire mm -hmm. watch, fire watch. There were huge, you know, 100,000 or right. more acre fires in a lot of the dry and the, the sagebrush areas and grasslands. Well, yeah. a representative right. from the White House told. Well, um, also, you guys remember President Clinton coming, former President Clinton coming and visiting Valley County and the fires during his terms in office. And w at that time, we said, well, this is an aberration. This doesn't happen mm -hmm. very often here, but when it does to that level, that inspired a, a president to come and visit. But not until the last six years, 10 years, have we seen what's happening now? And now they're worse than they were 10 years ago. Oh, by far. All right, the engines, the turbines, the gigantic turbines, you can hear them. They're firing up and this big beauty is <laughs> about to be airborne. I told you, it does not take long. Does the president have to make sure his tray table is in the upright and locked position? Though, Probably not. I'm guessing. I'm guessing he can do whatever he wants with his tray table. <laughs> 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 and as Mayor Beater told us, uh, former Mayor Beater, there is no middle seat <laughs> on Air Force One either. And they eat on China. <laughs> yeah. No, but Mark, going back to, we had a, a representative from the White House tell the media yesterday as we previewed uh, the president's visit today, telling us that uh, he wants it to be known, the president wants it to be known that he cares about the West and he is keeping his eye and on. And they're watching what's going and on. And they're watching what's going on because Mark, you're right. I do feel like the national media in particular, you know, the hurricane season, they're all over it. Uh, we have coverage of, of what's happening down there and I'm not saying it doesn't deserve the coverage, but right. it just doesn't, it doesn't feel like our, our wildfire fire season gets the attention from the national media as other natural disasters like the hurricanes do mm -hmm. or a tornado. They've certainly been on like the, no, the right. South Lake Tahoe fire mm -hmm. and those huge right. ones. But Go ahead, Mark. Sorry, Mark. Yeah, um, you're right, Kim. And um, but again, uh, the president has seen and actually, as Joe mentioned, referred uh, to the devastation and the lives that have been lost and the damage that it's that it's caused and that we do have an opportunity now to kind of stem the tide. Obviously, it, it's going to require a lot of uh, forest management more than what's going on now. It, we're going to have to uh, rely on the thinning of the forests and 
take some uh, preventative measures, but it's going to take money to do that, and it's going to take man and women power, and that is why he's here uh, taunt, uh, touting his infrastructure package that would pump in uh, billions of dollars into that effort. So that's the reason he came here today. And now, exactly two hours and 20 minutes since Air Force One touched down, it is about to leave on its way to Sacramento, California. Just Boy, I can get tell you that. Around, I believe, uh, and then head back the out the runway. Yeah, the backdraft from the turbines. That uh, I I wondered when that thing did its U-turn in front of us. We were about what would you say, 80 yards? I think we were about 80 yards from Air Force One when it turned around here, and <laughs> I wondered when when we were directly behind it if the backlash from those turbines were going to be felt and I was like this isn't bad and then all of a sudden it was like I was in a blast furnace turbines turbines thank you when those turbines hit us in the head well let's just say no hairspray in America is going to be able to keep this quaffed you that look good Mark wild. You, you look good <laughs> got a little Thanks. singed maybe too eh? <laughs> Can you see Air yeah. Force One now? It yeah, seems I, got, like it I got a little sand dusted. Um, it's 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 turning around right now, and uh, it's going to depart the same way that uh, that it came here, and it is headed west. Head west, young man. That's what they told Joe Biden when he was looking for a job, and he did all the way west to Boise Cascade. But for some reason, that didn't pan out, and he's probably glad that it didn't things have gone okay it's yeah here it comes i'm going to get out of the shot so yeah, you can uh, get a shot you can get a good vantage point of air force one and you know what you guys i, I am i'm going to stop talking so you can listen to this because it doesn't matter what political party you are affiliated with when air force one departs your hometown it is majestic and I have goosebumps. And it appears that the wheels are Thanks for are coming, up. President Biden. Have a nice trip and come back often. Come back soon. And fasten your seatbelt, President Biden. Come back soon. All right, Mark, thank you so much for all your coverage there out at the Boise Airport. And thank you for watching today as, our, as we brought you this special edition of the News at Noon. Full coverage on the News at 4 and KTVB.com.